Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Camille Lison. And today I'd like to uh, introduce you to somebody else before I even start. Her. <laughs> That's me at four years old. And uh, apparently I still kept the uh, same fashionista type pose, uh, even when I was coloring and coloring books and watching TV. But when I was four years old, I was also reading books. And I grew up loving literature, as I hope all of you do. But maybe in difference from what you were like at four years old, I had a little bit of a different story. And that story revolves around language, which is what the word polyglot means. Poly means many, and glot means languages. So when you see this, what do you think of? What's the word that comes to mind? Most of you are English speakers, right? What is this? It's a book, right? Hopefully you got that down. <laughs> book. B-O-O-K. Okay, good, good. <laughs> but for me, it was not just a book. Let me tell you a story. When I was in kindergarten, I was sitting at a shared table with some of my friends. And we were playing, we were doing whatever we wanted. And of course, the nerd that I am, I wanted to read. So I saw a book cross the way from me. And I said, I'm going to ask for that. So I looked over at my friend and I said, hey, can you pass me the leaf club? And he's like, what? What on earth is a leaf club? I said, you have it right there, the leaf club. He said, what is a leaf club? He looked over at his friend, it's a leaf club. Then the teacher came over because she saw that there was a problem. And she said, now, 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 Claire, what's going on? I just want the livre. What's a livre? And that's when I went home and I cried. <laughs> because nobody understood me. And I said to my parents, what's going on? Why didn't anyone understand me? And they laughed and they said, because, Claire, that was in French. <laughs> oh boy, there's an issue there. Well, I'm sure for some of you in the audience, you might speak another language, right? How many other people do speak another language? Maybe it's your first language, aha, or it's your second language. Very good. So many of you in the audience could even tell me another word for book. Can any of you tell me another word for book in your language? Say it loud and proud. Go ahead. Libro. Libro. What else? Liber. Liber. What else? Kitab. Kitab. Very good. So you see that many of us have different pronunciations, different perspectives of what this very simple object is. For me, it wasn't just a viva, it wasn't just a book. It was also ein Buch, because I also was raised speaking German, and also Libro from Italian. So these multiple perspectives made the world look a lot differently, even when I was very, very young. And what did that mean? It meant as I got older, I began to see the world from different perspectives wherever I went. When I was speaking in French, the world seemed different. There were different cultural norms, there were different perspectives. And I, as a French Canadian, have a completely different culture from the people in France, or the people in Haiti who speak French. So it's kind of mind-boggling to see all of the cultural connections that can come through language. So growing up as a polyglot, English, French, German, Latin, Italian, and eventually, as I grew older, I said, you know what, I'm going to embrace being a multilingual person. At first, I was scared. I hid that I spoke French. I didn't want people to know I spoke German. I didn't want more people to know that, yeah, where my family speaks Italian. And I thought that was weird. I thought that made me somebody different, somebody who I shouldn't, you know, I shouldn't talk to other people about this. But then, as I grew older, I said, you know what, this can really open people's eyes to the world that's out there. And so I began learning Russian, because my neighbors are Russian. I began learning Hindi and Chinese. I began learning Arabic. Oh, this word, so I'm sorry. <laughs> my friends, that's the first thing you always learn about your language. You have to know how to insult somebody, and then you become their friend. Hey. So anyway, but this changed the way that I interact in my everyday life. And so when I went to undergrad, and they had a Chinese New Year celebration, they said, please come. And I said, that's great. Can you teach me how to say Happy New Year in Chinese? Well, sure. And when I went to the New Year celebration, I was able to participate more because I had that word. I had that phrase. And I wasn't just a guest. I was a person sharing as an active participant in their culture. I also live in Dearborn, where Arabic is 
spoken. And so when I go to the bakery in the mornings to get my fresh, delicious zato bread, I always say shukran to the person behind the counter. And they always smile and look at me like, wow, that was nice. And when I met some students who were from India, I learned that it's not just Hindi in India, there's multiple languages. So I knew when to say Namaste versus Vanakam, North and South. But there was a problem, and this might be true for some of you who speak another language. You might not be able to write in that language. How many people cannot read or write in the language they may have grown up speaking? I see it, yes. And that is a catastrophe because you do speak the language fluently. You know what you want to say. You can express yourself. But could you ever write a book in it? Could you ever write a paper? No. And for me, I could read and I could write a little bit in French. But I said, you know what? I am so inspired as a literary person by people like Victor Hugo, by people like Baudelaire. And so I said, this is going to be my opportunity. This is going to be the chance where I can take my voice and I can put it on paper. And so I took out a piece of paper and I chose to say a very simple phrase. Je m'appelle Clamery et je parle français. My name is Clamery and I speak French. And from that moment when I connected my spoken language to a written language, I realized there are more components of language than just talking to your friend. There's writing, which can be very difficult for people. Even if you're a native English speaker, you know how many hours you spend behind your computer screen writing an essay that you think is useless for a class in college, and you have a hard time choosing the right words, and you rework it so many times. And the same thing happens when you're learning a new language. You rework it so many times so that you can sound just the right way. And so I spent years and years dedicating and training myself in French and in German primarily. And now today, I teach French here at Wayne State University. And I study, and I'm going to be getting a doctorate. Because I feel like learning another language can open so many doors. Now, many of you in the audience might not be going into languages. You might be an engineer. You might be a future doctor. You might be a future lawyer, accountant. But whoever you are, and wherever you're going, language is so important in the global society. French brought me to places I would never have imagined. Yes, Quebec is considered to me to be home. But I also went to France. I explored beyond the boundaries of the French language that I knew. And I was able to participate in so many other cultures because of that step. And I want to inspire you all today to make that step for yourself in your lives. Because who would have ever imagined I would do this? Did I just become the queen of Canada or something? I mean, look at that. You have the new flag, you have the big chair, you have the posture. I was in the Canadian Senate, and I was working as an intern, rubbing shoulders with all the Canadian politicians, working in an office with a senator, Senator Joan Frazier, who represents Montreal. She used to be a journalist, and now she works in the parliament. She works to promote justice in Canada. And primarily works towards bilingualism in Canada. As some of you may know, right across the border, about five minutes away, is a bilingual country. Windsor, when you cross the border, you're able to speak in either French or English. And all across Canada, French-speaking peoples and English-speaking peoples are represented. And so I was able to see some of the language laws that have come into play in Canada. I was able to embrace the bilingualism, the bilingual nature, and the amazing efforts that the Canadian government uses to protect and promote language, because language is so important to keep. Whatever language you grew up speaking, never lose sight that that is beyond words. That is beyond hello. That is your cultural identity. And we are able to share so much through our languages. And when we learn another language, we can learn about so many differences and so many similarities between each other. For example, this semester I have many students who are international students from Brazil. And I have learned how similar the French language is to Portuguese. And it's a beautiful thing to have this shared. Not only did I have this experience, but I also was able to go to the south of France, in Avignon. I was able to be with the National 
endowment for the humanities, which promotes and protects culture in the United States. And I was able to delve further into what I love the most, which is literature and theater, keeping the humanities alive, keeping art alive, and exploring that. And so I was able to be behind the scenes in a theater. I was able to see how the theater works. And I was able to embrace all of the beautiful things about the French culture, including sharing a glass of wine with a professor who studied Harvard. It was an experience that I will never forget, and I continue to build on as I return to France this summer. It spurred me on to continue to study, to grow, to learn, and to explore other cultures. And if you're sitting there and you're saying, I can't do this, yes you can. Any one of you can. Whether you're a business major or a pre-med, I want you to take a challenge today to push yourself towards language learning and learning about other cultures. Because if you're able to practice medicine in Haiti, or if you're able to understand the German economic system, or if you're able to go to another country and say, yes, I know that you speak English, but I would prefer to speak with you in Chinese, that changes the entire dynamic of your relationship with another person. And I think that is so important. As the world becomes smaller through technology, we see how easy it is for us to communicate with people who live thousands of miles away. I talk to my friends and family in France, in Italy, in India, in China, all the time. And it's as if they're right next to me. That means that you need to embrace and understand the connections that are growing even further in the realms of language, culture, and communication. And that's why you should take a stand for language. So today I want you to leave with this challenge. What can language do for you? Thank you very much.
No sooner spoken than broken. What is this? 